the holy name forever. Amen. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today occurs the World Mission Sunday. It was instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1926 and is always celebrated on the next to last Sunday during the month of October. On this Sunday, we are invited to promote through prayer and material sustain the work of the Catholic missionaries in the whole world and the propagation of the Catholic faith on the entire globe. Someone says we should not make proselytism. We should let everyone be happy with his own religion, whatever this might be. This, although, is entirely erroneous. We know that there is only one true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, has taken flesh from the Virgin Mary. He is the only mediator between heaven and earth. His is the only name in which there is salvation. This is why we need to make every effort that every human being may come to know, love, and embrace our Lord. Mission, then, moreover, does not mean only giving people in countries of the third world humanitarian help and to do philanthropy, but to communicate to people the knowledge and the love of God for their salvation. In a second moment, then, this missionary effort may include also humanitarian and cultural promotion, but these are not the principal objectives. In order to give us human beings eternal salvation, Jesus Christ himself all sends also us out, his apostles and disciples, and also us today. Mission means that we all should not only carry our faith in our hearts, but also confess it through word and deed. The transmission of the faith we know has become difficult in our country and in Europe as a whole. In many cases, the necessary knowledge of the faith, and even more so, the practice of the faith, is lacking. In order to be able to become true missionaries, we need first of all to know well the Catechism and to practice our faith fervently. The Lord is King over all the earth, as we sing in today's responsorial psalm. Governments rise and fall by his permission, since he is the Lord of all. In effect, God says to every ruler what he tells King Cyrus in today's first reading, I have called you, though you knew me not. The Persian King Cyrus was chosen by God as the instrument to bring the people of Israel back from Babylonian captivity to the Promised Land. Admittedly, this king exalted himself in his pride, in that he attributed his military successes to his own faith and not to the helping hand of God. Several times also, invading armies were used to punish Israel's sins. The Roman occupation during Jesus' time was in a similar way a judgment on Israel's unfaithfulness. The reading shows us that God invisibly guides the course of history and always has a plan of salvation for his people and for us, who are realized when we trust in God and love him. The temporal power of men is or ought to be at the service of the Lord. From him comes all authority, and we must respect it. God's saving providence makes it possible for human authority itself, even if pagan or unbelieving, to serve his plans of salvation for his chosen ones. God is always above history, mysteriously governing the destinies of humanity. This is why we should pray for our political leaders, that like Cyrus, they do God's will. I am the Lord, 
and there's no other. There is no God beside me, says the Lord in the first reading. Every throughout our true authority on earth is a participation communicated by God, who is the origin of all authority and can be exercised only under him, in dependency from him and respecting his laws. St. Clements of Rome says, You, Lord, gave them the power of kingship for your magnificent and ineffable strength, because we know the glory and honor given to them most obediently without opposing your will. Give them, Lord, health, peace, concord, and constancy to exercise safely the sovereignty given by you. We owe the government a concern for the common good and obedience to laws, unless they conflict with God's commandments as interpreted by the Church. St. Theophilus of Antioch explains us, I will honor the emperor. I will not worship him, but I will pray for him, because it was, he was not made to be worshipped, but to be honored with the observance of the laws. He is not a god, but a man constituted by God, not to be worshipped, but to act as a just judge. We are also called upon the to respect the authority of those in power and to pay the taxes and fees. But at the same time, and still more, we have to obey God and to serve him alone. That means, if something is demanded from us that is contrary to faith or moral law, then the following applies. We must obey God more than we obey man. No one can serve two masters, says Jesus in another passage of the Gospel. The obedience to God's commandments comes always first, and all other requests of obedience are subordinated to it. In today's Gospel, Jesus is asked by the Pharisees, it is, lawful, is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? He answers, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. We owe God everything. The coin bears Caesar's image, but we bear God, God's own image. We owe him our very lives. St. Augustine explains us, as Caesar seeks his image on his coin, so God seeks his in your soul. Give unto Caesar, he says, what is Caesar's? What does Caesar ask of you? His image. What does God ask of you? His image. But Caesar's is in the coin, God's is in you. Saint Ambrose explains further on, the image of God is one, the image of the world is another. That is why St. Paul also admonishes us. And as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so we bear the image of the heavenly man. In order to serve God as we ought, and in order to be entirely his, we need thus separate ourselves from the spirit of the world, which is all perversity and corruption, and to clothe ourselves with the heavenly man, that is, with virtues. St. Ambrose says again, if you do not want to be taxed by Caesar, do not own the properties of the world. But if you have riches, then you are Caesar's tributary. If you do not want to be absolutely indebted to the king of the earth, abandon all your possessions and follow Christ. He rightly orders to give first to Caesar what is Caesar's, because no one can belong to the Lord if he has not first renounced to the world. To some of us has been given the vocation to abandon the world and to follow only Christ in the religious state. But also all the other faithful who are not called to do this are requested not to attach their hearts to the goods of this world, 
but only to God. We need to make a serious effort to cultivate in ourselves both natural and supernatural virtues, so to reproduce in ourselves that very image of Christ, which he expects to see in us. We will be able to do so if we entrust and consecrate ourselves entirely to Our Lady, the Immaculate. She, who is the form of Christ, will, if we allow her and collaborate with her, form also in us an authentic image of her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.